and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, I'm going to be doing a drawing that I did for week two of Inktober. And if you don't know what Inktober is, it's a contest or a challenge created by Jake Parker, who's an illustrator. And every day in the month of October, you're supposed to do an ink drawing. You can also do the partial challenge where you just draw every other day or weekly. And I'm doing the weekly challenge. And the traditional materials that you can use are watercolors and all kinds of different pen and inks. And you can go ahead and use Stabilo pens, Stadler pens, Micron Pigma pens, just whatever kind that you like. And the program that I'm going to be using is Art Rage 5 and Rebel 2. But I'm going to be starting out in Art Rage 5. And I decided that I needed a very detailed drawing for this one because I'm going to be doing a pirate. And if you watched my last video, you saw me talking about the fact that things would have been a little bit easier had I actually drawn the picture out in advance. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And I like Art Rage 5 because you can open lots of different photo reference windows. And you really can't do that with Rebel 2. Um, I have a separate program that I use for the photo references when I'm using Rebel 2, but I wanted to go ahead and just use ArtRage 5 and go ahead and make the sketch in it because it has a lot of nice pencil tools in it and you can really make a, a very good sketch in ArtRage 5. So I found a, a pirate reference on pixabay.com where they have royalty free uh, photo references and you can use them for all different kinds of paintings and they had some pirates there and I liked this pose he looks really menacing and he's got a big knife and everything so I decided to use it and then I have some more that I found there too just to kind of give me an idea of what I want to do here and so I made a quick sketch of what I want the pirate his position to look like and then I'm deciding that I wanted to do a night scene so I put in a moon and then he's going to be standing in front of the ocean so I decided to get a ship and I found a reference on Pixabay there for a nice sailing ship and so I put that in the back there too and I'm going to have some clouds and just try to give it a real spooky ambiance to this picture. So I'm just kind of putting all the objects that I want in here, just kind of making a quick sketch right now. And you want to go ahead and, and do separate layers on things, especially if you're going to start doing the detailed sketch. And so here I made a separate layer and I'm starting to make the sketch more detailed and tighten up on the on all the features and just try to make it look more realistic because I kind of want to have it pretty well drawn before I start adding the watercolor. And this is the way I work traditionally. I just take watercolor paper and go ahead and take a pencil and I usually make a complete sketch before I start doing watercolor. Now, I don't do this with acrylic so much but I do this a lot with watercolor it's just easier. And so I'm just kind of working on his features here making sure that they're straight and adding in the beard and the mustache making sure that the eyes are on the same level and that the nose is the correct proportions and just making a darker lines here and a lot of people will do the beginning sketch in blue color which is probably better because blue doesn't um, show up as well when you're doing a, a like a copy or a transfer so that's why they use blue a lot especially in animation but I just use kind of a light gray for mine and 
I'm just going back over the sketch now and making the lines more refined and correcting a little bit the shapes here and using my photo reference looking at it and referring back to it so that I get the correct shapes and the size and the position and I'm just going back over it again and make sure again that it's on a different layer than your initial sketch although I've actually messed up and done it on the other layer then you just have to erase all those lines now if you're doing this traditionally you will have to just erase the the rough lines underneath or you can take tracing paper and you know get the get the shape that way if you want to you can trace it off and then and then transfer it onto the watercolor paper with carbon paper or something like that you can do that you can use a light box to do that just there are several different ways to do it but this is what i am doing with the the digital just using the art rage program first and I'm just drawing in the clothes here, just kind of refining the shapes of his coat and working on his arm and just trying to get the sleeves correct and just give it a little bit of a really kind of a raggedy look because he's going to be a ghost. So you're not going to have him look real spiffy. We want to kind of make him look ragged and old and you know sort of torn I guess his clothes look torn and so I'm working on the hand a little bit and hands are always tricky so I'm really using the photo reference to refer back to that and just trying to get the correct shape and also the knife trying to work on his big knife because we want that in there because that'll make it look like he's really dangerous and scary and so I'm just trying to work on the details for that and just sketching in on his hand and refining it a little bit erasing it and going back and just trying to get the look of his hand there and then working on the face a little bit too and adding in his hair and the bandana that goes under the hat just working around back and forth trying to get some refined details and one of the things that I like about Art Rage is that you can really increase the size of your photo reference and so if you have a good photo reference you can blow it up really well and see all the little details and that helps a lot and I really like that about that program a lot of programs don't have that or they only have one photo reference window that you can open and so this is one of the things I really like about ArtRage 5. And so you can also move the photo reference around and move them different spaces on the screen in different places. And it's just really nice to have that, that little function there. And so then I, I'm moving the photo reference for the ship up where I can see it and I enlarged it so that I can actually see the details. Now the ship that we're going to draw, you don't have to get all the details, but we just kind of want some of the main shapes of the the masts and the sails on it and just to kind of give it sort of a, a silhouette look in the background because we just want a, the idea that there's a pirate ship in the background maybe and so I'm just kind of sketching in some details there and like I said, it doesn't have to be super detailed, just kind of give it some indications of lines on the ship and, and the ropes and how the sails would go and some of the flags flying. And then I'm working on the moon a little bit, just trying to make it a little bit rounder. So I like to use the stencil function in ArtRage. And that's another thing that I really like about Art Rage is that it has the stencils and you can use that for your shapes. And if you're following along traditionally, get out a compass and do it. That's, or, or take a bottle cap and just trace around it. If you've got something about the, 
the right size that fits with the size of your painting, use a bottle cap. Just something circular to kind of give you a, a correct shape of the moon so that it doesn't look oval or lopsided. And then I'm cl I keep shutting the bottom layer off so I can see what the clean sketch looks like. And eventually I'll just get rid of the bottom layer because I won't need it anymore and we just want to have the the really clean shape of the pirate left and so I'm just kind of working a little bit more on the details of it and trying to get get it clean looking so that I can add the watercolor to it so this is the end of part one of my pirate ghost series and in part two we're going to finish out the drawing and then we're going to start adding the watercolor to it so thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you later